This is a lecture from Open Tuition. For the free lecture notes that go with this podcast, please visit opentuition.com. The lecture on foreign exchange risk management. And in this one, uh, we're going to look at how we can use currency futures. Uh, and here, it's very important that you fully understand uh, what futures are and how we're going to use them. Because although for the numbers, uh, a lot of it is just learning the rules, uh, the rules all become rather silly if you're not uh, perfectly clear what's happening. Um, so what I'm going to do is spend a few minutes trying to explain exactly what futures are and how we're going to use them. Then I'll work through a very baby example just to try and make it clear uh, the way they actually work. But only a baby example because there are practical problems we need to look at. But then I'll look at a fuller example bringing in uh, these extra problems. So first of all, let me try and explain uh, briefly um, what futures are. And futures are in one sense very much like forward contracts. That if you remember uh, earlier when we looked at forward contracts, I might give you a spot rate, today's rate, uh, let's say this is dollars to the pound. I might tell you the spot rate is uh, one point. Uh, five zero. Now, I want to keep this very brief, very simple. So let's just forget the spread for the moment uh, completely. Just suppose I tell you there's a spot rate 1.50. Now that's today's exchange rate. Maybe we also had a three month forward rate. And of course, the three month forward rate uh, is a fixed rate for conversion in three months' time. Uh, maybe ooh, they're quoting 1.55. Well, as I've said, uh, a currency future is in one sense quite similar to a forward rate, but the first big difference is that instead of it being uh, quoting a rate for one month from now or two months from now or here, three months from now, uh, with futures, it's a fixed rate for conversion on a fixed future date. But there are standardly four dates it'll quote for. Instead of quoting for three months from now, um, you might have um, what we call a March future. And all we mean by March future is it'll be um, the right to convert at a fixed rate um, for conversion on the 31st of March. Uh, but equally, um, they quote what we call a June future. And again, that would be um, the right to convert at a fixed rate, but this would be for conversion on the 30th of June. And I'm sure you can guess there's also September futures, December futures. For conversion, it's the last day, so 30th of September and the 30th, uh, 30th of September, 31st of December. So futures are always quoted, currency futures are always quoted for the quarter days, um, which does rather limit you. You know, you can get a fixed rate for converting on 31st of March or for converting on 30th of June and so on. Uh, but it does limit you to one of those four days, which makes it, for the moment, rather restrictive. But on any one day, they will quote a whole series. So what you might have is this. Uh, maybe today is the 1st of May. They might say the spot rate 
again I'll keep these dollar pound they might have a spot rate uh, $1.5 dollars to the pound uh, May they might say ah June future they might quote 1.52 I'm making up figures obviously um, but on the same day you might see a September future 1.53 um, a December future say 1.55 could be anything uh, a March future 1.58 now obviously I've invented those figures but it does mean that if you wanted to convert money today you do it at 1.5 but if you want um, you can go for a June future it will give you the right to convert at a fixed 1.52 at the end of June or you could go for a September future but that would give you the right to convert at a fixed 1.53 at the end of September and so on so you've always got that choice and if if it were the case uh, that um, you needed to um, convert money on the last day of June then that would be perfect go for a June future and you have a fixed rate of 1.52 However, as I've said, that would make it rather restrictive. If you do need money at the end of June, September, December, March, fine. But I think realistically it's very unlikely uh, that the transaction would be at exactly one of those four dates. And we're going to use it slightly differently because those, I'm saying, uh, made up figures, those were the quotes on the 1st of May. But of course, if you came back a week later, if you came back on the 8th of May, clearly all those quotes could be different. The spot rate could have changed, obviously. Maybe the spot rates moved to 1.49. But equally, the rates they're quoting for the futures are, are, are likely to have changed. That a June future... Whereas last week they were prepared to give you a fixed rate of 1.52 for the end of June. Come back uh, on the 8th of May and they might say, ah, oh, we'll now only give you a fixed rate of 1.51. Uh, September futures, they might just give you a fixed rate of 1.52. Um, again, I'm, clearly I'm inventing figures, it could be anything. But from day to day... Just as the spot rate's going to change, equally, um, the futures price will change. The futures rate, the rate they'll give you, the fixed rate they'll give you for end of June, end of September. So, this is where it gets interesting. Because what's rather nice about futures is although you can use them like a forward rate you know if you're on the 1st of May and you need money at the end of June fine get a future you've got your fixed rate 1.52 for the end of June but the way we use them much more as financial manager is that these futures are traded Uh, they traded on uh, the various futures exchanges. The biggest one um, is the London International Financial Futures Exchange. But they trade is just like a stock exchange. And just like on the stock exchange, you can buy and sell shares. And as you're well aware, a lot of people buy and sell shares to try and make profits. You know, buy today and if the price goes up, sell them next week and they make a profit. If the price goes down, they make a loss. But in exactly the same way, futures, you can buy and sell them. And if the price goes up, you make a profit. If the price goes down, you make a loss. Uh, and so, they're traded. You can buy and sell. Just like shares. But, two things that make them... Um, rather interesting the first is uh, 
and what makes them very appealing uh, often to uh, gamblers or speculators is that you can buy and sell but you only settle up with the dealer at the end of the deal. Now what I mean by that, you see, is you might buy futures today uh, when the price, I'm making up a figure uh, again, maybe the price today is 152 dollars to the pound. Uh, maybe you sell next week And maybe next week the price is 155. Well, fine. If the price has gone up, you've made a profit. Now I'll show you later exactly how the arithmetic goes, but effectively you've made a profit of 0 0.03. But what does make this quite interesting is when you buy, you don't actually have to pay any cash out. You know, I might buy a million futures. Uh, if I bought a million futures, it'd be a million times that, but I don't actually have to pay it. It's only at the end of the deal. I, and by the way, it's just a phone call to the deal. I say, buy a million futures at 152, and the deal will record it. Next week, I say, sell those million futures at $1.55, and it's only at the end of the deal, when I've sold the future, that the dealer calculates the profit or loss. And if it's a profit, I, I receive it. If it's a loss, I pay it. Now, the dealer isn't stupid. They will, in fact, want a big deposit from you. Uh, otherwise, anybody could end up ringing and buying and selling and have no money at all. Uh, they will want a deposit. I'll say more about that later. But if we, it, it is a returnable deposit. Apart from that, though, it is just a question of effectively two phone calls. We only settle up at the end of the deal. If the price here when I bought today and sell next week, if the price has gone up, then at the end of the deal they calculate, the dealer will pay me the profit. On the other hand, if of course the price had fallen, suppose the price next week is uh, 140. Well, I've made a loss there of uh, 12. I would have to pay the dealer. Now, two more things before I show you a quick example. So remember where we are. That with futures, um, you buy and sell futures. We settle up with the dealer at the end of the deal. Secondly, now, I'm not stupid. Suppose I bought those futures at 152. I'm hoping the price will go up and I'll make a profit. But suppose the price did go down. It went down to 150, let's say. Well, I'm not stupid. I'm not going to I'm going to say, well, I'm not going to sell and make a loss. Let's wait. Because if I keep waiting, hopefully the price will go up and then I'll sell them and I'm making a profit. Well, you can buy and sell any time you like. So buy today, I can sell tomorrow, sell next week, sell next month. But there is an ultimate time limit. You must finish the deal by the last day of the future. Now what I mean is this. You can finish the deal at any time. up to the end of the future. And what I mean by the end of the future, if it's a June future, well, it must be by the end of June, the last day of June. On the other hand, if it's a September future you're dealing with, 
Again, buy today, sell anytime you like, sell tomorrow, sell next week, sell next month, but you must finish by the last day of September. And so on. So you can't carry it on forever, there is a time limit. You ring the dealer and say buy, you ring later and say sell, but when it gets to the last day, June future, when it gets to the end of June, the dealer would automatically finish the deal, whether you're making a profit or a loss. But the final thing, before I show you an illustration of how we actually use it, if the futures price today, sorry, I'll leave a space because I'll write my last sentence in a minute. If today the futures price is $1.50, if I think it's going to go up, then of course I buy today and I sell later. So if it goes up to uh, uh, 152, no problem. I buy at 150, I sell at 152, and I've made a profit. But suppose I thought the price was going to go down. Of course, if I think the price is going to go down, there's not much point in buying, knowing I'll have to sell at a loss. Well, with futures, you can sell today and buy later. Now, some people find that hard to accept. But you see, you're not really buying and selling anything. It, it, it really is just gambling in a sense. Because remember, just as I said, when you buy, you don't actually pay any cash. You ring up and say buy, you ring later and say sell, and at the end of the deal, the dealer calculates what's the profit or loss, and you settle up. Well, similarly, if I thought the price was going to go down, I simply ring the dealer and I say sell. He doesn't want anything. It's not simply a phone call. I have to complete that deal, which means I have to buy at some stage. But if I sold today and buy later, fine. The profit is the difference between the sell and the buy price. If the price has gone down, I sold at 150, bought at 148, I make a profit. If, on the other hand, the price has gone up, I've sold at 150 and I have to buy at a higher price, then I've made a loss and I pay the dealer. And so that's the third thing. You can buy first and sell later, or you can sell first and you can buy later. Uh, again, you must finish the deal by the end of the future. But those are the three key things. You can trade in them either way around. You ring up and say buy, in which case uh, later you must sell, or you ring up today and say sell, in which case later you must buy. At the end of the deal, the dealer calculates the profit or loss. He pays us or we pay him. And although, as I've said, you can finish the deal at any time you like, tomorrow, next week, next month, you have to finish it by the last day of the future, June future by the end of June.